Welcome to the video for 1.4 Solving Equations. This is for Algebra 2. Our objectives are that we can solve equations and we can also solve problems by writing equations. So in order to solve equations, we need to know the definition of an equation. An equation is a statement that two expressions are equal. It is also helpful to discuss the properties of equality. And we're going to be using three variables, a, b, and c. So we are going to assume that those variables are real numbers. Let's talk about the first property. It's called the reflexive property. And the reflexive property states that one expression is equal to itself. So a equals a. Or if we were to substitute a number such as 1, 1 equals 1. The next property that we're going to discuss is the symmetric property. The symmetric property says if A equals B, then B equals A. An example with numbers would be if 1 half equals 0 0.5, then 0 0.5 equals 1 half transitive property states that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. An example of the transitive property would be what I have written in the bottom right corner. If 2.5 equals 2 and a half and 2 and a half equals 5 halves, then that means that 2.5 equals 5 halves, which we agree. It's just another form, decimal and improper fraction. Substitution is another property. This property says that if A equals B, which means they equal each other, then you can replace A with B and vice versa. The example shown at right, if we know that A and B are the same value, and we also know that 9 plus A is equal to 15, then that means 9 plus B is also equal to 15. Hopefully you're familiar with all four of those properties. We did use them in geometry. There are four more basic properties that will be helpful for us. They are the addition property, the subtraction property, multiplication, and division properties. Basically what it says is if you see an operation, you can do it to both sides. For the addition property, we see the definition says if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. You can add the same value c to both sides and the expression will still be equal because the original equation was a equals b. For example, if we have x equals 12, then we can add 3 to both sides, x plus 3, and that's going to equal 12 plus 3. The reason why that works is when you add the same thing to both sides, you're still getting an equation. Similar to the addition property is the subtraction property. For the subtraction property, we have if a equals b, then a minus c equals b minus c. So if you subtract the same value from both sides, you still have an equation. The example, similar to the previous one, is shown at right. Multiplication and division are quite similar to that. You can see the definitions written and the examples. So if you multiply the equation by C on both sides, you'll still get inequality. And if you divide both sides by C, you'll still get inequality. Just make sure for the division property, you know that the bottom number cannot be 0 because we cannot divide by 0. A solution of the equation is the value of the variable that makes the equation true, which basically means whatever number you can plug in for the equation and the equation is still true. And in order to solve an equation, we use inverse operations, more commonly known as opposite operations. So those inverse operations are operations that undo each other. The inverse operations are addition and subtraction. Obviously, those undo each other. And the other pair of inverse operations are multiplication and division. I think we're ready to start our first example. Let's start really basic and solve a one-step equation. 
you probably learned this first in pre-algebra and brushed up on it in Algebra 1 and Geometry. So we have the equation x plus 4 equals negative 12. Remember, in order to find the solution of an equation, we need to isolate the variable. That means get the variable all by itself. And that's going to require inverse operations. In this case, we only need one. So what you want to do is look for the variable, x. See how there's a plus 4 next to it? You want to do the opposite of addition. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. That gives us x equals negative 16, and that's the solution. It was very quick. Now the checking process, hopefully you remember how to check. What you want to do is take your answer, negative 16, and substitute or plug it back in for the original. So the negative 16 is going back in for the x to make sure it works. Negative 16 plus 4, does that equal negative 12? Yes, it does. So that means we got the right answer for this first problem. In example two, we are going to solve a multi-step equation, which means it's going to require more than one inverse operation in order to isolate the variable. So here we have the equation negative 27 plus 6y equals 3 times the quantity y minus 3. So let's rewrite the equation and solve for y. As you can see, the variable y is on both sides of the equation. So first thing, I see parentheses. We need to distribute that 3 to both terms inside the parentheses. So that means we get 3y minus 9 on the right side. And let's just drop down the left side. So we just use the distributive property. Now what we want to do is combine like terms. As you can see, we have a 6y on the left side and a 3y on the right side. And the easier approach would be to move the smaller number over so that we still have a positive coefficient. So I'm going to subtract 3y from both sides because that 3y was originally positive, so the opposite is negative or subtraction. So those 3y's cancel out. And now we have negative 27 plus 3y equals negative 9. From there, it's only two steps left, and I think most of us are very comfortable with two steps. So you want to add 27 to both sides to get rid of that negative 27, and those 27s cancel. 3y equals 18. And the last step is division because that 3 and the y are attached by an inv invisible multiplication. So divide both sides by 3, and we get y equals 6. So that is our solution. And of course, you can check that by plugging it back in for the original, and you'll find out that it, it does indeed work. For example three, we're going to have a word problem. So feel free to pause here to write down the word problem and draw a rough sketch of what you see on the screen. This problem is about flowers and flower carpets. It says flower carpets incorporate hundreds of thousands of brightly colored flowers, as well as grass, tree bark, and sometimes fountains to form intricate designs and motifs. The flower carpet shown here from Grand Place in Brussels, Belgium has a perimeter of 200 meters. What are the dimensions of the flower carpet? So you may have guessed it, we're going to be using an equation to figure out the dimensions of the flower carpet. And of course, we need to use some variables. So whenever we uh, work with a word problem, we want to define our variables before using them. So let's say that x is the width of this carpet. And 3x is going to be the length, as you can see in the picture. Hopefully you recall the equation for perimeter of a rectangle. It is twice the width plus twice the length. That's how you get the perimeter. So now that we know that x equals the width, we're going to substitute x for width. And we also know length is equal to 3x, so we're going to substitute 3x for the length. And one more thing, we were told in the problem right here that the perimeter is equal to 200. So we're going to substitute 200 for the perimeter. From there, we're just going to do our basic operations, and then we're going to solve for our variable. So what I did here was I multiplied the 2 and the 3 in front of the x to get 6x. And from there, we can add 
2x plus 6x, that equals 8x. Then we have a one-step equation. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we divide both sides by 8, and we find out that x equals 25. So that means the width of this carpet is 25 meters. Then from there, what we need to do is take that 25 and plug it in for the expression up here for the, width, the length, and then we can find out the length. So we need to take the 25 and plug it in for the x, and we're going to get 3 times 25, and and that equals 75. So far in this lesson, we have only looked at equations that have one solution. However, you may remember that equations do not always have to have one solution. The other possibilities are either having infinitely many solutions, which is also known as the identity, and that means that the equation is true for every value that you plug in or substitute. And the other option is no solution, which means no matter what number you plug in for that variable, the equation will not be made true. Example 4 asks us to find if the equation is always, sometimes, or never true. Above, I wrote in red to show you that when the equation has one solution, that means that the equation is sometimes true. Uh, when the equation has infinitely many solutions, then that is always true. And if there is no solution for the equation, then it is never true. So for part A, we have the equation 11 plus 3x minus 7 equals 6x plus 5 minus 3x. When we combine like terms, we get 3x plus 4 equals 3x plus 5. And then we subtract the 3x's from both sides, and we get 4 equals 5, which is not true. That means that this is never true, and there are no solutions. For part B, we find out that 5 equals 5 once we do a couple combining like terms, and that is a true statement, so that means that this equation is always true. It's also known as the identity, and it has infinitely many solutions. Our last topic to discuss in this section is that of a literal equation, and this was learned in Algebra 1. Um, literal equation is an equation that uses at least two different letters as variables. So here we see in example 5, the equation C equals 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32 relates temperature in degrees Fahrenheit F and degrees Celsius C. What is F in terms of C? That means we want to solve for F, which means we want to isolate the variable F, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, in order to get f by itself, there's two different options here. We could distribute the 5 ninths, but then that would create an extra step. Instead of that, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 5 ninths, which is 9 fifths. That will get rid of that fraction. So once we moved the 9 fifths over to the other side, we have 9 fifths times c equals f minus 32. From there, it's just one basic step to get rid of that negative 32. We're going to add 32 to both sides and we get f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. So that is our final answer. We found f in terms of c. This equation would be useful to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. To complete this lesson, I want you to try these four problems for a lesson check. So write down these four problems, show you work, and make sure you box your answer. The first one is just solving a typical multi-step equation, and then the last three are just solving for the variable k. So you want to get uh, all the other variables and terms to the other side and get k by itself. Let me know if you have any questions when I see you, and I wish you a great day.